I look a little hammered. <laughs> I apologize for those of you that are watching this. Um, okay, great news. Um, I'm going to read you the latest update on our little Jane uh, from the hospital. You can see I'm home. Sue's still in Texas. Uh, this is her third week there straight uh, on this stint. And I was there for a week, had to come home and get some few things done, and I'll probably be heading back down in a week or so. But But listen to this. Listen to this. This is such good news. And you guys, your prayers, your faith, um, you've been following this journey with us, but let me read this. This is really, really cool. This just came, this is hot off the press. So Caitlin, our daughter, she's there today. Hey everyone, here's a little update on Jane. Her neutrophils are 810. Now I have no idea what neutrophils are, but when she went in, well, the doctor first said they need to be at least 200 before she can go home. They were at zero, big zilch. They got up to 40, went back down to 20, and just kind of hovering. So 810. They they gave the bone marrow a, or a, 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 some kind of medicine, drug, I don't know, to um, enhance the bone marrow or help the bone marrow. And I think this is what's done that. So her neutrophils are 810. That's, I have no idea what that means, but I know it's good news. Okay, her WBC count is coming up. I don't know. Her hemoglobin has stayed stable. She did need platelet, tr uh, platelet transfusion today. Plate platelets are living cells, so once they're used, they die, and they are used in healing. So we just think that they are working really hard. She, this is, and then this next thing is huge. She hasn't fevered in over 24 hours now. Now that's big. Her, her fever going up down, you know there's an infection probably, uh, well, we know that the uh, appendix uh, as well as the liver was really enlarged, probably trying to process all that shiz. <laughs> okay. Um, she hasn't fevered in over 24 hours now. The swelling in her stomach has gone down. That's a big one. Her her little belly wasn't so little. It was just sticking out. Uh, they are lowering the dose of morphine and took away one antibiotic. That's huge. The doctors are really encouraged. Friday, it was a close call. And if they hadn't started the bone marrow stim stimulant, that's what I was talking about, Aaron, we would have had a much different outcome. We're so grateful. Thank you for your continued prayers and fasting. Our sweet Jane is getting better. God is strengthening her. So that was from our daughter this morning. So that is just, we got to have some positive news. We take it, right? Um, the other thing I haven't mentioned for a while, and it's just because so much stuff going on. Man, I really do look tired. Um, is Cardio Miracle. You know, You know, knock on wood, I think this is somewhat real wood. I haven't been sick. Um, I've been able to, to go into hospitals back and forth and do things. Um, I've been three doses a day, traveling, uh, having the energy. So Sue's been pounding it as well. So what I did is I had two canisters that I took and we left one at the hospital. So who, who's ever there has, has it. So my daughter's been pounding it. Sue's been pounding it. Um, Sue and I spent the day uh, Sunday at the hospital together all day with Jane. And that was a real treat. I sent a little, uh, post a little photo of that. Really, really fun. Um, I think I've watched Encanto three times, maybe two times. Um, but we got to read the, Toad and Frog books, and it was really fun. Uh, it was a great day. <sighs> Not without its uh, challenges, but overall, it was just awesome. So, so really good news. Um, but, you know, plugging something or selling something is, is just, you can tell, it's really not my deal, my thing. 
but I, <laughs> I am such a believer in, in this nitric oxide found in the Cardio Miracle and, and using it on a regular basis. Uh, the energy, the stamina, the, um, the wellness, sleeping, you know, there's just a lot of, there's just a lot of, uh, awesome benefits. I'll, I'll leave the link to, to get a discount for it. But, um, I was, I was listening to Greg Matson on, uh, quick, quick media on a YouTube channel. Many of you watched Greg and he had a thing on the, the trans situation, but, but he talked about how it's the only thing, the supplement that has really, really helped him. And, and he's more of an analytical guy and, you know, really wanted to find out and dug into this. Um, I'm more like, okay, I'll try it and see, see what it's like, you know, but, but he's really tested it and tested results and blood analysis and all that kind of stuff. So good stuff. I highly recommend it. If, uh, you know, I said this a little bit before, but with the changing of the seasons, that's usually, a, a, there's a spike in, uh, colds, flu, you know, whatnot. Um, I'm not saying this will totally prevent everything. In my case, it's kept me probably healthier than I deserve to be. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, I love it. And I've pretty much eliminated most of other supplements that I, that I had. So good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Um, it's a dark day in the world with, uh, Tucker Carlson out of the loop, uh, being fired. Now he's going to come back. And the, the only reason why I say it's a dark day um, I, he'll be back and he'll be better and it'll be a better platform. I'm, I, I'm convinced of that. So I'm not stressed about that. What the dark day is, is that with the mainstream media of, of Fox news, uh, being put out there and the most popular, um, uh, I'm most watched, uh, cable, whatever, you know, a news source, uh, it was nice where Tucker had the prime time and word was getting out, you know, even if it was just in the background of somebody's house, you know, Tucker was, was spreading the good news and uh, not the good news in the sense of the gospel, but the truth, the truth about Ukraine, the truth about um, the borders, uh, the, the truth about, um, 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 Fentanyl, the, the truth about so many things, so many things, corruption, corruption, uh, the Hunter Biden, the laptop and all the, just all the things. He, he was really the voice that, that was getting it out, out there. And so, so the, the reason why I say it's a dark day, we'll still be able to find all that information and get it because we, we search for it, we look for it, and we find it. But in mainstream news, he was basically it, basically it. Now, the others kind of dabbled in it, but they, you know, they towed the line. Uh, he exposed Big Pharma, uh, which sponsors all the news organizations, Big Pharma, Big Pharma, Big Pharma. I'll tell you, Kennedy is going to be a great candidate for the Democrats and uh, a very uh, good man, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm looking forward to him. Wouldn't it be cool if, if he and Trump ran as a ticket together? I would love that. And of course, old Joe <laughs> announced his candidacy. <laughs> you know what? Here's what I think. Here's my prediction that he'll probably win. And Trump will have 80 plus million votes and uh, Biden will have 90 million votes. You know, it's, it's just, that's just my prediction. But, um, you know, we're looking at a, a, bigger, a bigger picture here, excuse me, than American politics and uh, 
all the corruption that, that, that's going on. We've talked about the secret combinations. We've talked about these things. And, and in, in our, it, it, this is my opinion, but the Republicans and Democrats, you know, they're, they're all into it up to their eyeballs. The wars, the wars are a big thing. And that's what Tucker really concentrated on, especially the most recent, the Ukraine conflict. And nobody really covered what the whistle, well, I call him a whistleblower, but the, uh, the young man that they, you know, showed, CNN showed him going and getting in with all the attack team. And, you know, the guy's in his, like, basketball shorts or something. And and they and they get him. But not very many people talked about what he really revealed. And what he revealed was that there were American troops on the ground in Ukraine. So So we were definitely lied to about that. And, and then just all the, the other stuff going on. But uh, Tucker really revealed it. I can't wait to see where he ends up. It might take a while. He might have to, um, uh, he, he might still be under contract and legally he can't do anything until that contract's up. I don't know. I really don't know. And, and I don't think it has anything to do with the Dominion settlement. I really don't. Um, I think it more, has more to do with the, the Ukraine war and the January 6th coverage. That's just my opinion. Um, I, know he, I know he's the most popular, but advertisers don't like to advertise on his show um, unless you want to buy a pillow. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about. And a few other things, you know, the, 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 the stranglehold uh, on on the media and and the support that they have to give to certain organizations and certain things is, is so real and so strong, um, and and the the uh, pharma, big pharma is is one of the the big ones, but there there are others too, right? So yeah, uh, really, really, uh, I think a hinge point in the sense of. You know, we talk about hinge point. We talked about the hinge point when the Rome Temple was built. And that's more focused on on second coming, our faith in 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 the in the restoration of the gospel, and all those things. But this is a hinge point. Having a mainstream, the top news uh, commentator. He was a commentator, uh, Tucker Carlson, to have the top one get canned. And, you know, it's so fascinating. I, I, I record Tucker and I hadn't been able to watch him, uh, you know, while I was in Texas. And, you know, we got three grandkids and, and all that stuff going on. Holy smokes. Um, from infant to, you know, little Nellie, six-year-old. I hope she's six. I think she's six. <laughs> um, just just stuff and Andrew running around. I mean, these kids are amazing. Uh, super, super good kids. Uh, they get some cardio miracle too. Uh, uh, Sister Palmer's really good at saying, oh, you want some juice? You know, here you go. <laughs> so they get a little cup of it. It's great. And they've been strong and healthy and, and good. But uh, what was I talking about? Anyway, I got off again, sorry. Um, but the, the, uh, <sighs> crap, what was I talking about? Anyway, that'll come to me in a minute. So we're, what I want to talk about today, in addition to, to this, the, the Tucker news, that, that, uh, uh, YouTube, uh, video I posted, uh, put the link to with Glenn Beck and Jonathan Kahn, uh, on his, uh, a lot of it covered his book, the, the, the gods will return or something like that. The return of the gods, uh, super, super good book. And, and we're talking about, um, you know, if you reject the God of Israel, He's going to be replaced in, in the lives of people and in nations immediately by a God that's not going to uh, bode well for the people and the country. And that's actually happened in this 
in this country. And I think Jonathan Cahn really nails it. And it always has to, it always goes to the children, always goes to the children. Now, um, I covered this a little bit in my last video, but things have, have expanded as I had time on the flight and whatnot, uh, which was just a really weird flight. I'll just put it like that, but I made it home. So uh, airline travel, those of you that have been doing it, you know how unreliable and really just weird it is. Occasionally, you know, things work out okay, but more often than not, it's it's not what it used to be. It's not, but Pete Boot Edge Edge is really, you know, on top of it. And so all will be well. Um, yeah. Uh, so looking at this further and the sacrifice of our children, we're doing it. We're doing it. And, and you can include a lot of things. And I've, I've covered this in other videos. But the word abomination always seems to surface when we're talking about the sacrifice of children. The sacrifice of children in a lot of different ways. Now, um, when we are seeing things happen today that we, we wouldn't have thought of just a few years ago. The mutilation of children... Uh, with the transgender situation, to the confusing of sexes. All this is, is to destroy children. And it, it's, it's the most abominable thing that can happen. Uh, Christ said it himself, better than a millstone put around your neck if you, if you harm one of these, my little ones. And this was in our reading last week in Come Follow Me. And we, I, I talked a little bit about that. Now, last October, you remember there was this little talk by President Nelson right at the beginning, and it was about abuse of, of children and, and women. And some might have felt it was a reaction to situations that had happened that had become public. I think it was in Arizona was one, and, and then we had one in Utah County that was pretty big, uh, that, that, that made some news. There's so much that happens that never even reaches the surface. And it's within the church, people within the church. And, and sometimes it's involved in rituals. Sometimes it's just perversion. Uh, but it's, it's all under the, the guise, or not, not the guy, it's all under the umbrella of an, of an abomination. And that's what the prophet said. And, and I think he used that word, this is my opinion, but I think he used that word on purpose so that we would look at what abomination was. I bet you hardly anybody even references that talk anymore. Um, it's, you know, we're focused now on contention, you know, avoiding contention. Don't, don't have contention because that, that's what, what he really focused on this last conference. Um, the, the, the abomination or exposing evil seems to be a difficult thing uh, for the church right now. I, 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 I can't quite figure out why. Um, the, the title of my last video was uh, uh, An Opposition in All Things, 2 Nephi chapter 2. Uh, I think it's one of the greatest chapters, that 2 Nephi 9 these these two chapters are just um, I don't know they, they they seem it seems like there's all this stuff that boiled and it just boiled down into this wonderful soup <laughs> and and that second Nephi chapter two and nine seem to be that that really delicious soup that once everything kind of boiled together that's how I look at those chapters um, but but and opposition in all things. You cannot have a kind, loving, merciful, you know, gracious Heavenly Father that provided His Son without the an opposite. You can't have it. You can't have it. That's why, that's why we have the garden and the cross on this side, and we have the empty tomb on this side. They're the opposites. They're the opposites. And, and you can't have the empty tomb without the cross. 
without the garden. You can't have it. And, 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 and so that's why we talk about both. That's why we talk about both. Now, I get that we don't want to get into gory details, except go to the last, second to the last chapter in the Book of Mormon and tell me that isn't as gruesome as you can get, all right? Definitely an abomination and, and just laying it out there, laying it out there. This is how wicked these people are. Well, we're there, folks. Um, there are so many crazy things happening, but there, for some reason, uh, so me growing up, I'm 65 and I look every bit of it, um, growing up, I heard more of hellfire, damnation, wickedness, exposing it, talking about it. I remember my my dad, especially, I, I don't know if my mom would ever do it, but my dad, I remember as a kid, going, he'd go down to the adult film theaters in Salt Lake with, it was a ward assignment, and you'd go down there and pick it. <laughs> and, and stand in front of the movie theater that was showing, you know, X-rated movies, and, and, you know, shame the people away. <laughs> I was so proud of my dad, you know, and, and it was a ward assignment. It was like a welfare assignment. Okay, who, who's going to go down and pick it? Well, you know, I got, we got six guys from the elders quorum or whatever, high priest group back then, or the 70s, remember 70s, and they'd go down, take their shift, you know, and it was usually late at night, and I'd remember my dad, you know, going, and it was, just, it, it was a vivid memory of mine. Uh, we don't do that. Uh, being in Texas, uh, here just outside of, out, outside of Waco, uh, where we drive a lot to go to the grocery store and whatnot, there's a, there's a, a Planned Parenthood. And on the weekend, oh, it was awesome. Uh, there were, um, big sign that said, oh, joy, it's a boy, you know, it's, it's, uh, they pick it. They, they put out all kinds of things that, and they're Christian groups that go there uh, to Planned Parenthood to do this. And, uh, you know, they're taking their precious time, you know, their weekend to, to go there and, and do that. It's, it's awesome. But, but we don't have that approach. I, and and I, can, I can see some wisdom in, in it, but to not talk about it much anymore. Now, the prophet brought up abomination and abuse in October conference, which I was, I was thrilled about. Um, I would like to hear more, but you know what? This is me. This is me. And, and I, I say this all the time, not my pig, not my farm. I, I know I'm not in charge. I get it. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that say, that's the smartest thing you've ever said. Uh, cause I did, I did get that. Uh, I, I get that a few times when I say things like that. But I, I still can express like a concern or like, ah. and, and this is, this is what I think is, is a struggle for many of our young people in the church c contemplating, you know, the, I'm talking like high schoolers that are getting, their minds are getting ready for, you know, am I going to go on a mission? Am I going to go to school? Am I going to, you know, what, what am I going to do in life kind of thing? And for long periods of time, they really haven't been taught much about evil, about evil, about evil, and, and that it's real. Uh, here's an interesting thing. Um, this is right out of Preach My Gospel. This is right out of Preach My Gospel. Now I have the, the version of when I was a mission president. And so I, I don't, that was in 20 to, to, to the end of 2018 or middle of 2018. But, but this is what the missionaries would study um, um, concerning the first vision. As Joseph sought truth among the different faiths, he turned to the Bible for guidance. He read, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Because of this passage, Joseph decided to go ask God 
what he should do. In the spring of 1820, he went to a nearby grove of trees and knelt in prayer, and he described his, his experience. I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head, above the brightness of the sun, which descended gradually until it fell upon me. And when that light rested upon me, I saw two personages whose brightness and glory defy all description, standing above me in the, in the air. One of them spake unto me, calling me by name, and said, This is my beloved son, hear him. Now, the missionaries were then told to um, memorize, let's see, where is that? <laughs> There's, there's a list of scriptures that they're supposed to, to, to do. Um, let's see, where is that? Yeah, memorize Joseph Smith's description of, of seeing the Father and the Son. Joseph Smith History 1, 16 through 17. That's what I just cited. Um, and always be ready to describe the first vision using his own words. Do not rush through it like I just did. Um, bear sincere testimony that you know it is true. Do not hesitate to explain how, how you come to know of its truth. Invite your companion to do so as well. All great stuff. But what's missing there? What is missing? What happened right before he saw a pillar of light? And opposite. We. So when I was a missionary, we memorized that. We didn't teach it. We memorized it, though. We knew that he um, he felt the darkness from an unknown world or, or something like that, words to that, that thing. Now, what, what's the hesitancy of, why do we not teach that? Like, especially to the young missionaries, that they should really study, because you know what? This is, this is preach my gospel here, folded over, but this is, this is taught like it's just like scripture to, to the missionary. And they, they'll, they won't go beyond the bounds of this, most of them. So they'll, they'll just read those, ver those two verses about, I saw a pillar of light. And if this continues on and on and on and on and on, and that there's no description of the the evil dark side. I'm not saying we we live in it, but we've got to teach that it's out there. Otherwise, you know, the the it seems like the the idea is is that well, I haven't heard it from the pulpit. I don't really read it and preach my gospel, so it's probably that's probably just not true. And listen to this. Okay, this is a cool little book. Um Got this down at the uh, Church History Museum down in Temple S S Square area, uh, across the street from Temple Square. And, and th this is where they have that first vision. Um, I don't even know if it's still there or what, what they're doing. It's, uh, we used to have uh, let our missionaries take investigators to that. But it's like a panoramic screen. And, and it there's, there's 10 versions of the... Uh, of the first vision in this little little book, and that video that you can see down there, I I, I guess it's still there. Um, I haven't been downtown Salt Lake for I don't know how long, but um, the that video version is based off th these. L let me read to you. Um, what it talks about in previous to I saw a pillar of light. Okay. So, so this is interesting. Um, what this is, 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 as I'm reading this, it's a combination and it's in different color of ink. So this includes all the versions of the first vision. And there's a lot of zhuzh in here. So, so I'm not going to differentiate so we have the one that's in the scriptures, but then there's nine others. And this book compiles them as, as, it, as if it is one narrative. And it's in different ink, depending on which, and, it's, and it, it'll tell you which, which. So the red line is Joseph Smith. 
The purple is Levi Richards, as, as it was told to Levi Richards. And then David White is in blue. Lavender is Alexander Nabor. And then gray is um, something else. I don't know. Okay, here we go. I pondered many things in my heart. So I'm quoting from this book now. Uh, and this is Joseph Smith. I, I pondered many things in my heart concerning the situation of the, the world of mankind, the contentions and divisions, the wickedness and abominations. Joseph Smith was contemplating the abominations that were going on in the world at that time and the darkness which pervaded the minds of mankind. My mind became exceedingly distressed for I be became convicted of my sins. Joseph Smith was really struggling with his own personal um, issues and seeing what was going on in the world. So, so this is part of the lead up, right? This is part of the lead up. Okay. Now, this will become familiar to you, but I'm going to read this. At length, I came to the conclusion that I must either remain in darkness and confusion or else I must do as James directs, that is, ask of God. At length, I came to the determination to ask of God, concluding that if he gave wisdom to them that lacked wisdom and would give liberally and not abrade, he would not refuse to verify his promise to me. Now, that's a little different. That's from another version, so, and you'll recognize that. And I might venture. I considered this passage an authorization for me to solemnly call upon my Creator to present my desires before him and the sure hope of a certain of certain success. I knew not who was right or who was wrong, and I considered it of the first importance that I should be right in matters that involved eternal consequences. Information was what I most desired at this time, and, and with a fixed determination to obtain it, I called on the Lord for the first time. So, in accordance with this, my determination to ask of God, being thus perplexed in mind, I retired to the woods to make the attempt and bowed down before the Lord. It was on the morning of a beautiful clear day, early in the spring of 1820. It was the first time in my life that I had ever made such an effort, for amidst all my anxieties, I had never as yet made an attempt to pray vocally. Now, this, this version here that I'm going to read is, was to Orson Hyde. I immediately went into the woods where my father had, had a clearing and, and went to the stump where I had stuck my axe when I had quit work. So, this was a, so as I retired to the place where I had previously designed to go, Having looked around me and finding myself alone in the place above stated, or in other words, I made a fruitless attempt to pray, I kneeled down and began to offer up the desires of my heart to God. Now, this is where it gets intense. I had scarcely done so when immediately I was seized upon by some power which entirely overcame me and had such an astonishing influence over me as to bind my tongue so that I could not speak. My tongue seemed to be swollen in my mouth so that I could not utter. I heard a noise behind me like someone walking towards me. Thick darkness gathered around me, and it seemed to me for a time as if I were doomed to sudden destruction. You think some of our young people don't feel that sometimes? And yet, we don't, talk, we don't want to talk about that. You know, if we talked about it and said, this is the devil, this is Satan, this is the powers of Satan, and there's a way to overcome this. You know, maybe we wouldn't have to medicate everybody all the time. Editorial comment, okay? Now we're back to the quoting the book. Listen to this. This is in one of the, one of the accounts, not, not in our scripture. The adversary made several strenuous attempts to cool the passion of my soul. Oh, man. He clouded my mind with doubts and brought to my mind all sorts of improper images 
to prevent me from obtaining the objective of my endeavors. You don't think that happens to young people? Have crazy images in your mind of weird, perverted, pornographic stuff? I mean, come on. He's a 14-year-old boy. You think, think of what would have an influence on him to get him away from his objective. Think of what influences our young people. You know, they have all the social media, they have all this stuff, they see everything, they know everything, and, and it's all a distraction. This is what happens. If they read this, they'd go, dang, this is what's happening to me. How did Joseph Smith get through it? I don't know, let's read. Okay. The adversary made several strenuous attempts to cool the passion of my soul. He clouded my mind with doubts and brought to my mind all sorts of improper images to prevent me from obtaining objection, uh, an object of my endeavors. I strove again to pray, but could not. The noise of walking seemed to draw near. You know, this is twice now. He hears somebody walking or something walking towards him. And I sprang up upon my feet to look around, but I saw no person or thing that was calculated to produce the noise of walking. But exerting all my powers and every energy to call upon God to deliver me out of the power of this enemy, the power of the enemy, which had seized upon me. And at the very moment when I was ready to sink into despair and abandoned myself to destruction. Now, we don't like to talk about suicide, but you you think of someone that gets to that point where they think they this, this is there's no way out. Doesn't this describe that? Wouldn't that be good to show that a 14-year-old boy had the same, uh, maybe not the same, but similar feelings, okay? Abandon myself to destruction, not to an imaginary ruin, but to the power and influence of some actual being from the unseen world. That, that was the phrase I wanted to who had such marvelous power as I had never before felt in any being. Just at this moment of great alarm, I kneeled again. My mouth was open and my tongue loosed. And as I called on the Lord in mighty prayer, the dark cloud soon parted. And light and peace filled my frightened heart. Or in other words, the overflowing mercy of God came to uplift me and impart new impetus to my failing strength. I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head, which exceeded the brightness of the dazzling sun in his meridian splendor. And it came down from above, which at first seemed to be considerable distance. As it drew near, it increased in brightness and magnitude so that by the time that it reached the tops of the trees, the whole wilderness for some distance around was illuminated in the most glorious and brilliant manner. Now, guys, you don't think our young people need to hear that? What the heck is going on? I, I just don't I just don't get why we don't want to teach that there is evil out there that it wants to consume young people consume young people. It is the very abomination that causes desolation. Not, not, you know, I like that, the, 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 we, we call it the, the abomination of desolation or the abomination that makes desolate. I like that better. And, and the ruining and destroying young people in all different manners, I think is, is really, the 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 ultimate because Christ said it himself I mentioned this in the last video he said who's the greatest in the kingdom well come over here little kid right here right here this is the greatest of the in the kingdom right here so who would satan want to destroy the greatest the child the young person okay so i think We, we as parents, grandparents, leaders, I really think we need to 
teach the other side of this instead of the love and compassion and getting along and God loves you and all that. That's all, yes. I saw a pillar of light, yes. But what did he experience before? Okay, you can't have the light without the darkness. You just can't. So, um, by eliminating that or protecting our children from that, I think we're doing them a disservice because then when they go through it, they, they're, they're like, gosh, I, I don't even know what this is. I'm depressed. I'm bummed out. I hate life. Everybody hates me. Uh, there's, there's no hope. Um, I'm confused. I see this. I see that. Blah, blah, blah. Not knowing that almost all of this is just evil, pure evil to destroy young people, and they're not taught that. So that's my soapbox today. <laughs> oh, you guys, thank you for watching and listening and supporting the channel and your prayers. Jane's name on the temple roll. Just the love. And thinking, um, okay, so I went to get, I took my daughter's car to get it inspected. You know, there's, grandpas can do certain things and they can't do other things. <laughs> these, these are things I can do, right? So I'm like, okay, I can shop. I can go get this. I can go get that. I'm not so good with, uh, you know, taking care of. I mean, I'm, I'm okay, right? But I just don't have that nurturing ability that Sue has and that my daughter has. So I'm, I'm there at the, uh, you know, it's kind of like a quick lube, but they do car inspections there. And I have all the paperwork. Caitlin had everything ready. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the paperwork that I needed to show that... Um, we'd license it and everything, and it was insured. So I go in and they said, yeah, just have a seat, we'll, we'll get it taken care of. So I'm sitting there and this, this beautiful lady, I, I might've mentioned this already, I think I did, just this beautiful lady, but you know, maybe looked a little rougher than normal, I don't know. She said, how are you today? And I said, you know what, I'm doing okay. And, and, you know, we got talking and I said, yeah, I'm not from here. And then, you know, blah, blah, well, why are you here? You know, and I, then I tell her about Jane and, and we're here. And she goes, oh, let me see a picture. Show her a picture. Oh, she'll be in my prayers. I'll be thinking of her. Boom. This is what I'm talking about. Goodness. Goodness. Yeah, I think I did mention that. I apologize. Anyway, um, there, there are a lot of different sources that we need to get our information from. Not all of it is just contained in Deser a Deseret Book or conference talks, in my opinion. We, read, we really need to look for the heavens. We need to look at the earth. And we need to listen and listen to... Um, uh, the, um, even listen to the fake news so that you can see what they're trying to program into you because you'll hear certain phrases that, that will be repeated over and over and over again by all the hosts. And not that I, you know, none of us have time to sit and listen, but you can generally find a, a channel that will recap what the news has said and it'll that they'll just be these phrases. Well, that's that's the talking point that they want you to, to hear. You know, uh, this is an insurrection. This is an insurrection. This is an insurrection. This is an insurrection. This is an attack on our democracy. This is an attack on our democracy. This is an attack, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. And so, um, yeah. Oh, the last thing I wanted to read. Oh, I'm so glad I thought of this. Um, this this actually that actually just came right right from God, uh, right from the Holy Spirit. Um, 
and we know this scripture very well, but listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Uh, this is Ephesians 6, and I'm going to start um, uh, in verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, why aren't we need to teach this to young people? For we wrestle not with flesh and blood. So here's where we could talk about contention, okay? We don't need to contend with people, but we do contend against, or we wrestle, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Woo! Okay, okay. That's who we fight about. That's who we contend with. And wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand, that you that that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. And then it goes through the, you know, the different armament to put on your body uh, to protect yourself. So, so that's uh, Ephesians 6, and I started in, in verse 11. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers. This is of darkness. This is what we're talking about. And, we, and if we don't talk about who we're wrestling against, then, you know, we're just going to fill our kids with drugs and have them go to therapists. And look, I'm not going to say that some people don't need it and all that. I don't want to get into that. But you, you cannot tell me that we are not an over-medicated people in the United States. And, you know, just watch anything. And it's just full of commercials for, for drugs. And the schools push it. The mission department pushes it. <laughs> It's all about, well, let's get them on this medication. This, this will help them. And like I say, you know, I, I'm, it's not like I'm against all of it, but this needs to be taught. And then let's see what happens. If we don't teach this, then we're, we'll, our answer is, well, it's a mental illness. You got to have a drug. You know, isn't it interesting that the, the spirits, the evil spirits, or the devils that Christ cast out usually were mental, what we would say were mental illness issues. Just saying, love you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. This Bud Light is not for you. <laughs> Goodbye.